Hey, Luminary. So I have another unplanned episode because I got so excited at the prospect of Kamala Harris becoming our next president that I just had to look at her astrology chart. And let me just say, I was absolutely blown away at how congruent, how aligned she is working her star powered voice and leadership. So in this episode, I want to look at her leadership as it is written in the stars on the eve of her presidential nomination. I'll provide an astrobrand breakdown of her leadership keys, her communication style, her purpose, her mission and vision, all seen through the lens of astrology. Now she's going through some big changes and up leveling. So I pray, I hope that the cards land in her favor as we move towards election day. Welcome to Star Powered Astrology for Changemakers. I'm Leslie Tagorda, your guide, a Hawaii-born Filipino Jewish astrologer who loves navigating visionaries like you through the spiritual journey of your work so that you can be inspired to lead by your chart and become the luminary leader you were born to be. All right, friends, welcome, welcome. It's Leslie Tagorda, your brand and leadership astrologer. And of course, I couldn't help but look at Kamala Harris's astrology chart. I've actually looked at her chart several times throughout the years. Um, she's amazing case study. And, you know, not to put me into it, but Kamala Harris and I share that, uh, um, that Gemini rising and Pisces midheaven. So I absolutely look up to her in terms of how I can also lead as a Gemini rising. And so on the morning, I'm recording this on July 25th. I'm still in Hawaii. It's the afternoon. And I woke up to a video released by Kamala Harris on her Instagram, um, on her Instagram feed. I think it's also on YouTube. I think it's all over the place. And on, on the morning of July 25th, the caption reads, I'm Kamala Harris and I'm running for president of the United States. I was so excited. I had already been thinking about putting together an astrobrand reading for her so you could see how I look at natal charts and like see how her leadership is written in the stars. And I knew I just had to do it today because the captions and everything that she says in this short little minute intro video with Freedom by Beyonce running in the background, it is everything. So as of this recording, I'm recording this on July 25th, 3.56 p.m. Honolulu time, she hasn't yet received the Democratic nomination. Now, maybe by the time this gets released sometime tomorrow, she's, she, this is already at old news, she's picked her VP, you know, whoever it is. Um, but regardless, since Biden has gratefully stepped down from his nomination, the energy has been ecstatic. The, the, the prospect of Kamala Harris being on the Democratic ticket has changed the tide and re-energized the voters with this, with a historic one day fundraising. She, she raised over a hundred million dollars to confront Trump in the polls in one day. Now, I love how this is turning out. We have about 100 days until election. And so how can we maintain this energy from now until then to keep, you know, keep the hope going? You know, as personally for me, as a woman of color, um, I realize that Kamala has a lot of challenges already you know, the, the right and the, the Republicans have been coming out with just like terrible things, right? Like just talking about just racism and sexism, like why do they have to like hit so low? And I know that she has a lot of challenges to face as, you know, as a woman, as a woman of color, but there is so much hope and she represents everything 
that Donald Trump is not. And so I love that Donald Trump's side is kind of scrambling now because they have like built up their whole um, their whole election season to face Biden, which, you know, apples and oranges, they're not that different. They're both like old white guys. <laughs> so there's there's not much differences. But now the, the contrast is so much that we can all get behind Harris. So I want to reflect on this um, on keeping up this momentum, celebrating her and how far she has come, and looking at, you know, parts of her leadership style. I want to look at some of how her zone of genius is represented in her chart. I want to look at how her moon sign really creates and motivates her, her the feelings that she needs to feel successful, to feel like a leader. I want to take a look at like how she initiates, and I definitely want to take a look at a bunch of her communication keys and how she's really coming into her own with her communication keys. I mean, Kamala Harris has been on the, you know, on the political stage for as long as I can remember. Um, I moved to California back in 1999, uh, back in 1999, and she already was a power player um, on the California scene. You know, she has her start as a prosecutor, um, really focusing in on, um, on, on, on predators fighting against predators with you know childhood sex offenders um that was one of her like big forays into the legal world because she was taking these tough cases and you know i'll talk about like just what makes her so good at that we can see that in her sun sign and then she be you know like kind of just like a fast foray you know becoming then a, a senator for california and then getting picked by biden and then now just like you know leapfrogging and jumping up into this highest position um i'm just really looking forward and it's just it's so inspiring and it's so hopeful for all of us who maybe you are a woman of color and just never really saw um, leaders and role models as leaders and all of the the children that are being you know that are raised now that see this role model how things are going to change we are truly changing the faces of leadership so in part of me wanting to kind of break down um, Kamala Harris's natal chart to see her leadership maybe Maybe you'll be inspired to look at your different keys, your initiation key, your communication keys, your superpowers, your, your purpose, your mission and vision, and just see how powerful astrology can be in making your mark, finding your leadership style, and really truly amplifying your voice. So let's dig in. All right. So when I am working with a client, I always start with the sun sign. I know that the sun sign is like usually our first entry point into astrology and the sun sign. Um, and as soon as we learn about our sun sign, we like really jump off it and like look at all the other shiny objects in our chart. But I want to come back to the sun sign because the sun sign, just like the sun in our solar system, is the energy that gives life, that is our creative source, our brilliance. I like to think of our sun sign and our leadership as our zone of genius. And so to hone into the zone of genius of Kamala Harris, Kamala is a Libra sun. She was born on October 20th, 1964 at 928 Pacific in Oakland, California. And at the time she was born in the night, she has her Libra sun in the fifth house conjunct Mercury in Scorpio. And so when I think about Libra, it is, you know, the signs of balance, the signs of justice. Now, Libra isn't the only sign that is, um, you know, associated with justice and balance and the law. Of course, there is Sagittarius, which is on her descendant with her south node. Um, you know, when we have south node in Sagittarius on her descendant, you know, she's spent many lifetimes um, fighting for justice, fighting for morality. But coming back to her sun sign with this sign 
of balance. She is somebody who believes in fairness, somebody who believes in, um, not believes in, but it just radiates from her. She couldn't turn off this light. It's this light from within that gives her source. Libra is about fairness. It's about balance. It's about diplomacy. It's about keeping the peace. Um, and the way that Libra does this is through facilitation. Now, it's been a long time since we've had truly great leaders who are built on fairness and reciprocity and building relationships instead of burning down bridges and overpowering and fighting and fear mongering and threatening. We don't, that's not, that's not the way that Libra leads. Libra leads with creating bridges and creating relationships. And she's done this very strategically ever since she was an up and comer in the political landscape, starting in San Francisco, starting in the Bay Area. And so Kamala has built so many relationships. And that it has really helped her with, you know, climbing the ladder to the pinnacle of power in the United States states are almost to the pinnacle of power in the United States. Now, what is super interesting is that oftentimes the sun, you know, Mercury never moves very, very far from the sun. And Mercury is so close to her sun, but it's not directly in the heart of the sun. And it's also not in Libra. This Mercury, her communications device, her ability to speak her mind, to understand, to perceive, to um, both that input of information and understanding information, as well as the output of information, is in very pointed and sharp and analytical and intuitive and, you know, like myth busting, like no bullshit, <laughs> Scorpio. To have a, um, somebody with this kind of legal background, having their Mercury, their communication device in Scorpio makes them super investigative, makes them super thorough, in-depth, analytical, penetrating, getting to the truth, using both their knowledge and their emotional wisdom and their intuition. And so this makes Kamala very, very sharp, very smart, very hot, like, you know, very witty, um, very quick thinking because Mercury is moving direct. Mercury is at, you know, close to the sun while it's moving direct, meaning Mercury is really fast. And so she's always been very, very, very bright and very quick. And this is what has helped her with her education, with her career advancement of just being on, you know, just super, super sharp. Now notice that the sun and Mercury are in the fifth house. And the fifth house is generally about children, okay? When we can think about children or passion or pleasure projects, that is the realm of the fifth house. So she actually really has a lot of fun, like working for her, being in law, learning and speaking and being on stage and building these relationships are actually a lot of fun for her. And so you can see the power players that she has surrounded herself very strategically, right? That Scorpio energy is very strategic, always having, you know, when I think about Scorpio and being like a really good chess player, that really good chess player that is a Scorpio is already like in their head, mapping out their fifth step from where they are. I kind of wish I had more Scorpio energy. I don't have that ability to be that strategic. Um, but that makes her just really sharp witted. Now in the fifth house, of course, she got her start with protecting children. And protecting children and protecting everything that revolves around the, around children and for, in terms of like education and housing, all of those things have been really important to Kamala and that has set her the stage for her and her career. And so when we think about Kamala and seeing just that, sh that, that, that lightness that shines through her, her superpowers of fairness, 
justice, relationships, connection, mediation, facilitation. We have a leader that no matter what is going to emanate this. And she's not going to, you know, take any bullshit. And she's not going to talk about bullshit either because of that Scorpio. That Scorpio Mercury is just like can sense the bullshit, will call out bullshit and just be a really straight shooter. Now notice also that Kamala has a moon opposition. 27 degrees of Aries is where her moon's at in the 11th house to this 27 degrees of Libra. We have an exact full moon. It was just minutes before the moon and the sun were exactly opposite each other. And so Kamala has this clear understanding of her emotion, like her emotional needs, her intellectual needs, what things that motivate her intrinsically and extrinsically, they are in fine balance. Oftentimes these, these oppositions of full moons, like we just have somebody who is just so brilliant, and this Aries moon, I love my Aries moon um, clients because um, I see a lot of women that have these Aries moons and I, I, I haven't done my research on her upbringing and her childhood, but an Aries moon child is wild. They want to be first. They want to be the best. And it's not even, I take that back. It's not even a want. It is a need. So, you know, thinking about the little girl child that was Kamala, you know, growing up in school, I imagine that she needed to be surrounded by all of her best friends because because her moon is in the 11th house, surrounded by all of her power player friends, even as a little child, but also needing to be the best in her class, the smartest, the most competitive, the first. And this need that grows into our business, our businesses and our leadership and in our livelihoods shows us that her moon sign really motivates her to do her best. Now, her moon in the 11th house shows us that she also also has a lot of a social impact. To feel successful, to feel like a leader, she knows that she needs to be making social impact. This is probably one of the reasons why she set her bar so high with going so far. I absolutely love that. And so social justice, needing to be an advocate, needing to do the right thing, needing with that that equip with that Aries needing to be to be a warrior to being in that fight to advocate to do the right thing when we think of the moon we also have to look at where cancer is in the chart right because wherever cancer is in the chart the moon is directing us so some of her values because cancer is on her second house the way that she what she values the way um the way that she adds value into the world is directed again towards this elect 11th house of social values, social justice, social impact. The same thing with the moon when we look at her son in Libra, we also have to look at where Leo is. And so when we think about Leo on the third house of communications, her communications key that we're going to dive into a little bit more deeply, her communications key is now directed at the children, hope, the future, and how we can live with whole heartedness. We're going to see that her campaign is going to be really focused on the future, on children, on leading from the heart. And that really, really excites me. I want to talk a little bit before we go into her Leo third house key. I really want to talk about this video where she introduced and came out saying, I'm Kamala Harris and I'm running for president. So I just want to read the transcript in this short little video because I think that it's so important and I'm going to connect the dots to her communication keys. And so she starts. In this election, we each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? Okay. I'm just going to give you a hint, Gemini rising there, starting and initiating. She starts with her Gemini rising. There are some people who think we should be a country of chaos, of fear, of hate. But us, we choose something different. We choose freedom. Freedom, freedom, I can't move. Freedom, cut me loose. Yeah. Freedom, freedom, where are you? Because I need freedom too. 
The freedom not just to get by, but get ahead. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to make decisions about your own body. Okay, she's talking to us, her Sagittarian people who choose freedom. And notice that her Sagittarian, um, where Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter, Jupiter is here in the 12th house, the 12th house of reform, of putting things back to how they need to be. So, you know, thinking about gun violence, gun reform, prison reform, um, you know, abortion, come, putting that back in to have, you know, women having um, health rights. Okay, I love that, you know, when, when Kamala uh, earlier in her career, um, prison reform was huge on what was important to her, definitely living by this Jupiter for her clients in the 12th house. Okay, so back to her, the transcript of her video. We choose a future where no child lives in poverty. Coming back to her son in the fifth house, where we can all afford health care, where no one is above the law. That comes back to that Jupiter in the 12th house. It comes back to that Libra balance. It comes back to the South Node in Sagittarius in terms of social justice, justice for all. We believe in the promise of America and we are ready to fight for it. There goes her Aries moon. <laughs> Because when we fight, we win. Right? Her Aries moon is not taking a no for an answer. So join us. Go to KamalaHarris.com and let's get to work. I'm going to keep running because the winner don't quit on themselves. And so this is an, a call to action, not just for Kamala and her, her run, but also for us. I feel that this is a call to action that Kamala is, she's saying like, we are doing this together. And if I'm going to run, you're going to run. You're going to be the leader. And so maybe it's my own project projections because I want all of us to know ourselves so well and lead in our own style in our own style. But this is to me is Kamala is asking all of us to lead along with her. And so I love that Beyonce is giving us this permission to, you know, to create lemonade from our lemons. So let's dig in more to Kamala's chart in terms of like how all of these things line by line, um, how, how this is really working for her. So remember, I said her initiation key. So Kamala is a Gemini rising, 24 degrees of Gemini with the North Node there. When we have our North Node in our first house and like conjunct our rising sign, was she born to stretch into her sole purpose of becoming a leader, of being exactly who she is supposed to be? Like, absolutely. She is here to ask questions. She is here to create dialogue. She is here to um, open up our hearts and our minds. Okay. And so I love that in her, in, in that transcript of that video, in this election, we each face a question what kind of country do we live in? As a Gemini rising myself, I like to, you know, ask that one question <laughs> to, 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 you know, to answer, to create that story. And so for me with this Kamala Harris, it's like, who is Kamala Harris, you know, as written in the stars? Who is this leadership? So I hope I'm, I'm answering this. And so Kamala is talking to us her Sagittarians who believe in freedom, who believe in choice, who believe in justice. And we are done. We are done with all of like the dogma and, you know, the racism because at the, you know, the shadows of Sagittarius indeed is, is racism, is dogma, is all of like those things that don't celebrate diversity. And so she's really talking to this American future, this American hope that celebrates all of the different colors and all of the different identities and is moving past all of those ways of dogma. And so when we think about her communications key, we look to our third house cusp. 
on the third house we have leo and so leo is on the third house is really about shining brightly it's talking about pop culture it's being funny it's being playful and it's really interesting because you know, up until recently, a lot of Kamala's critics are that, you know, she's incoherent, you know, that could be like that Gemini, or she's just not funny, and she's kind of stiff, or when she tries to be funny, like things don't, you know, things go misunderstood. And I love right now that the public, us, all of her Aries, um, her Aries public and fans and her Sagittarius people are really supporting her with all of like the fun memes that are coming out of the woodworks. All of the things that have been used against her, like her, that kind of coconut meme. Um, there in 2023, um, Kamala was sharing a story about her mom would say to her to us I don't know what's wrong with you young people you think you just fell out of a coconut tree which really meant that hey you live in the context of history you need to know where where you've come from to know where you're going so many cultures um you know teach that we need to know from where we came we just didn't fall out of the coconut tree and so her critics were like oh you know like what's wrong with her what the heck is she talking about this coconut but now all of the memes are talking about the coconut and all of like you know like all of like the politicians are talking about the fun things about a coconut and so now all of these things that were once critiques are now turning into these fun and popular memes and that is what it means to have leo on the third house Okay, Beyonce gifted her the rights to freedom to use on her campaigns. Um, and there was a summer hit. I, I'm sorry, I'm so I, I was just looking this up because I saw this. Um, this meme, Kamala is brat. And I forget who the singer of brat is. Um, but that person, that artist, that musical artist, um, created that meme, Kamala is brat, meaning brat is the one who's getting all the attention especially this summer, like because that song was the hit and getting all of the attention. And so now all eyes are on Kamala. And so if you've seen those lime neon green um, memes that is, um, you know, portraying the cover art of of that brat album. And so having Leo on the third house, having fun, um, you know, going with what's um, popular right now is really helping Kamala. Now, one of the funny things that I, I found super interesting, and I don't know if this is like the Gemini or the, the Leo or like, or maybe it's the Saturn. I have Saturn um, in my first house. Obviously, our charts are similar, but <laughs> my chart is, is not anything like Kamala, but we have like the same um, house divisions. Um, and my, my Gemini 22 degrees. So I'm like, oh, yay, Kamala. But one of the things that I found out um, was that Kamala also loves Venn diagrams. And she was talking about this in, a, in an event in 2022. I love Venn diagrams. There is something about those circles and the analysis of where the intersections are. And I'm like, oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> Okay, I know that's just like really silly. I'm just super, super excited. So I want to go back to some um, some quotes that I have from Kamala that I've I've taken I've taken apart. So after Biden um, after Biden stepped down, her first campaign speech was in Wisconsin, and this was on July July 23rd, and she says, "I took on perpetrators of all kinds." predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, and cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain, okay? Can you see where she's talking from? She's talking from her son. She's talking from her cancer on the second house, protecting women. She says, so hear me when I say I know Donald Trump's type, because she's prosecuted them before. She's dealt with them. So sorry, Donald Trump. Yes, you are... <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are a cheat. 
Um, Harris also reflected on the momentum her campaign has since launching, um, you know, highlighting their record breaking grassroots funding again historically record breaking raising over a hundred million dollars in one day she says because we are a people powered campaign that is how you know we will be a people first presidency isn't it going to be wonderful to have a leader that actually listens and works for the public I was personally interested in this article because this was talking about some of her economic priorities, right? We think that, you know, the 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 critics and the right will say that Kamala is not, you know, here about protecting um, the economics and growing the economy. And she said as president, she would push for paid family lead and affordable child care. Paid family leave and affordable child care. And did you know that back in while Obama was president, she actually sued the Obama administration for their fracking practices because she was very concerned about the climate and environmental policies. I put on threads earlier about, you know, the rights critique of, you know, too many um, government um, oversight and regulations. Well, you know what, we wouldn't have to have all of these government oversights and regulations if corporations did the right thing. And they don't. So we have to have these. And so with cancer on the second house for Kamala Harris, you can see here how she's talking to her personal values of paid family leave so that we can, you know, nurture children so mothers and parents can be with their newborns and create those relationships and affordable child care. Because if, you know, if the right and like, you know, SCOTUS is going to take away all of our rights and, you know, bringing all these children into the world, well, we need to feed them, we need to care for them, we need to give them education, their, their, their arguments just don't make any sense. And so with Kamala and her values for that cancer second house, you're going to really be seeing her talking about women's rights and talking about environmental protections, because cancer also represents the land, our motherland, that we need to protect Mother Earth. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about is I am an astrologer that really loves natal astrology and getting to know ourselves in such a deeper way. I'm not necessarily an astrologer that will create predictions, but I love seeing what is in the energy, what is possible and how the how the cards could land with the energies that are present. And so when we look at our transits and what is happening for us, there is energy that is available to us for us to evolve. Because while our natal chart is, is static, it's still evolving, okay? Because there's so many different expressions for each of these natal energies. And so one of the biggest energies that I'm looking at is um, something that comes to peak on December 18th. So let's pull that out. So Uranus has been, is going to be going retrograde and it's going to be touching her natal Jupiter again. Jupiter, when Jupiter and Uranus come together, um, you know, they were together earlier in, um, on April 20th <laughs> was the last time that Uranus and Jupiter came together for this new cycle this new progress and when we think of this up leveling and progress of this jupiter uranus conjunction well this is happening again for her on december 18th it peaks on december 18th but this is really an orb all the way through election season and jupiter rules her people Okay, Jupiter rules Sagittarius, her partners, her collaborators. And so there is, if we can support her and rally for her, if we can change the tides in all of those purple swing states to really vote for her, North Carolina, Arizona, um, uh, I'm, I'm losing my, 
my thoughts. Um, there's there, there's a few more. I have a list. I'm sorry, I can't name them off the top of my head. But specifically thinking of like North Carolina and Arizona, she's probably going to pick one of those governors from those swing states to really amp up her people because it's with her people and uranus uh, conjunct jupiter that we are going to come together over gun reform over um access to women's health and children's health and taking care of the middle class this is what is going to win kamala the not only the presidential nomination for the democratic ticket but also to win the presidency you can see at this time we have a t-square that is formed with her natal chiron that is opposite um, uranus pluto and venus she is a cycle breaker for women okay being the first woman president of the united states with you know with jupiter and uranus up leveling and holding court this to me again i'm not somebody who creates who makes predictions but i would be so happy and pleasantly surprised at you know at her being um called the next president um, of the United States, the first woman president of the United States sometime, um, you know, sometime shortly after the election is had. Now, elections are going to be a little bit nutty. Again, I'm not a fear monger, but there's a lot of things going on in the cosmos that's going to, you know, have all of us advocate and do what's right. And so for you, what you can do right now to support Kamala and bringing in this new world is to tell your friends, especially in the swing states, that their vote matters. Okay, you know, um, Hillary Clinton won by three million popular votes. Okay, if we were just taking, you know, getting rid of the electorate. Um, Hillary Clinton would have been our president instead of Donald Trump because she won by 3 million popular votes. And so everybody in these swing states, your vote matters. Please show up. Please call your friends, your family, your relatives in those swing states and tell them how important it is to vote. You know, donate to these great causes and listen to Kamala. What kind of country do you want to live in? And my next question for you is what role do you want to have in this country? What role as a leader do you have? What are you here to contribute? So let this all be our rallying cry to change the faces of leadership and know that we each have our part. All right, my friends. So. Thank you for allowing me to share how I would read um, Kamala's chart and how her leadership is written in the stars. I'd love to hear what you think. All right, more later. Bye for now. As a human design projector, my energy shines more brightly because of people like you who share my work. If you enjoy this podcast and want to help build a movement of innovative astrology and leadership and spark the intuitive revolution, please rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, or better yet, share this podcast with your change-making besties. We will all shine brighter together as we create the future we want to see. Oh.